what is the best way to remotely access computers, to remotely access a lab, to remotely access your work. Is it VPN? There's a better way. VPNs are unfortunately getting a little old fashioned and they also don't offer the best performance and they're not even a secure way of doing things anymore. I have found a product that you need to check out called Twingate and this is changing the way that you can remote access into your home network. So I've got three main devices that I wanna be able to access from anywhere in the most secure way possible with no VPN, no port forwarding, no team viewer. Wouldn't it be great if you could have a secure way to actually be able to access any of these devices and only those devices using a specific service? None of these convoluted, complicated, insecure practices are needed anymore. What if you're an admin and you've got a few other admins, but you want this admin to only be able to access that server and this admin to be able to only access this server. What would happen with VPN is you'd log in with your VPN and you had access to the whole lot. But now you can actually direct your traffic to one specific spot. I'll tell you what, these VPN providers better be watching out. First thing you gotta do is you need to subscribe to my channel. Tech with Emilio, click on the button on the bell. We don't want those YouTube algorithms to not recommend these videos because they're full of plethora full of good content, right? I'm sure you agree. What we're gonna do, I'm gonna show you on my computer right now, I'm gonna log in and I'm gonna show you how cool this is. It's absolutely awesome. And you're gonna be like, whoa, how have I not heard about this? And it's completely for free. So I've got three main devices that I wanna be able to access from anywhere in the most secure way possible. I wanna access my virtualization environment, running VMware, I've got some ESXi hosts. I wanna access my CCTV. I wanna see what's going on, I've got some cameras. Are there any criminals? I then wanna access perhaps Plex. I've got a Plex server out there. And then I've got my NAS my network attached storage where I keep all of my data. Sometimes I wanna log in, check the admin side of things, maybe download some files here or there, but I don't wanna expose any of this stuff out to the internet. Let's log into my computer. So go into twingate.com. We're gonna click on try Twingate for free. And then you're gonna sign in with one of your favorite services. Put in your favorite information in here. And then how do you plan to use Twingate? Now, for me, I'm gonna be doing this for a personal hobby. Are you able to deploy Twingate on your own? No, you can't. Well. Go and get some technical support. Otherwise, if you're comfortable with CLI, command line, do that one. So I've updated my network name, Emilio Demo, and there's my URL. It's gonna be emiliodemo.twingate.com, and that's what you're gonna to use to be able to go and access your Twingate. You now need to do three things. The first is to define your networks. You need to add some remote networks, at least one resource that you need to be able to access. Then you need to establish the connection between Twingate and your network via this little connector. And then if you want users to be able to access the resource, you're gonna to need to use the Twingate client. If you think about it with VPN, you have a VPN client. Well, this is a Twingate client. So let's start by adding a remote network. Now, if you've got the cloud, great. You can actually connect it directly to your AWS, Azure, or Google Cloud other, but we're gonna be doing on-premise. We wanna access our infrastructure that we've got here in our home lab on-premise. You then give it a specific name. We'd add the network. You then need to set up one connector. And of course you need to get this set up behind your firewall. So within your network, either of these two will do the trick. And now the deployment method, how are you gonna install this connector? Now, if you're using Docker, you can use that. If you're using any of the Azure or AWS stuff, you can do that. If you've got Linux, you can do that. So I've selected Docker and I've clicked on generate some tokens and here are my tokens right in here. I'm gonna go and copy these, save these somewhere safe because you're gonna need them later on and they're always good to reference. Custom Docker command, you can leave that as default. You don't have to do those unless you really, really want to. You are gonna to have to have Docker running, of course, on your computer or on your server or on your NAS, whatever it may be. We're gonna be doing this on our NAS. Now comes the fun part. We're gonna go and configure our connector. So I'm gonna go and click on this guide up here, deployment guide, and here is the steps that you need to follow to get this Docker thing working on one of your systems. And you can do this on the cloud, in the office, et cetera, et cetera. We're doing this in our home network. You can do this directly onto a Windows server, onto a Mac server, as it said, onto Linux, of course, running Docker. In our case, I do have a Synology NAS, so I'm gonna be doing this directly onto my NAS, which is awesome. There's a bit of a guide here around how to get it running on your NAS, but we're gonna show you how to do it anyway. All right, we're now gonna log into our NAS. Here we go. If you don't already have Docker installed, you can go and do this. And again, remember, this is just a step on our NAS, but you can do this on any Linux box, on a Windows box, as long as you got it running. We're gonna go into our package center over here, and we're gonna actually search for Docker because I don't have it running right now. And there it is, install. Gonna follow the simple guide to get it installed onto my volume. You can open it right in there. You can also go into your little package center and there it is, let's open it up, Docker. Now the first thing we've got to do is we're gonna get the Docker thing sort of connected to the Twingate stuff, right? So we're gonna go into the registry area here and we're gonna type in Twin G or Twingate 
And there it is, there's our twin gate slash connector. We're gonna double click on that one to actually download it. Making sure that it's the latest one. We just wait a little bit for it to download and then we're gonna go and configure it. And now we just double click on it. Now to make it a little bit easier so that you keep track of what's going on, over here, we've got this thing called Watchful Beagle. That is the name of my container. So I'm just gonna actually name it the same sort of thing so that I can sort of keep track of those two. And it sort of makes a little bit more sense later on when I forget, which I probably will. All right, and then we'll click on Advanced Settings. We're gonna tick on Enable Auto Restart because we do want the thing to automatically restart should it run into any problems. You just wanna make sure that that is ticked. And then we select on environment. Now in here, we wanna add three different sorts of variables, three variables, and then we're gonna paste in some of those values that uh, we'll show you. First one, tenant URL. And this is the full URL of your twin gate. So if you remember, we had your name, the one that we set up at the very start, .twingate.com, and we throw that right into there. The next variable now is our access token. So we're gonna go twin gate access token, and now we come into here and we're gonna go and use that token over here that we copied before. And now our refresh token, that should be it. We should be able to now click on apply. Looking all good. Next, make sure you wanna run this command and we click on done. Here's our container running. Now if all things have worked correctly, we should be able to now go back into here and look at that, our watchful beagle is now connected. The container is now working and there's a connection between our twin gate and between our NAS using those really, really long and complicated keys. And now the fun begins. We're now gonna go and configure our twin gate to start talking to some of your devices in your network. And here's what's great. Apart from just connecting to your NAS, you can use twin gate to even access your Raspberry Pi. You can set up a second connector option to connect directly to your Raspberry Pi. Do you have a Windows VM? Do you have a Windows server? We're gonna show you how to do that, but you can also connect it to that, connect it to a Linux box. You can access all of this stuff remotely using twin gate and not VPN. So let's just go back to my home lab over here. And now I start adding in my resources. Now, if you do have DNS set up and DNS is working well in your network, you can throw in the DNS right into there. Uh, but if you wanna do it with IP, you can also do it with IP. Now, because I know the IP addresses of the devices, I'm gonna use IP and that should be fine. So I'm gonna give it a specific label. Now, what I wanna do is I wanna be able to access one of my VM or ESXi hosts. I have several, so this is one of them. Throw in my IP address and we'll just make my alias the same. Now, protocols, look at this, this is awesome. You could allow or restrict specific access. You wanna allow all TCP, all UDP, all ICMP, up to you. You can allow them or restrict them or block them all together. And of course, by allowing all traffic, you're allowing essentially every single port. So you may wanna do that or you can get very, very restricted. Click on add resource. Now this part is awesome. If you have a pool of people and you wanna be able to restrict specific access to specific resources, you can go and create a different pool of users and then allow just the users that you want access to that specific resource. But for me, I'm gonna say everyone. Good to go. I'm gonna add it right there. And now we're gonna add our Plex media server. I mean, I love movies, TV shows, and when I go on a holiday, on a trip somewhere, I record a lot of stuff and I throw that all into my Plex. And you can add your Plex server right in here. Same deal. I'm gonna go in here, Plex. Same deal, we give it the same Plex alias and we leave everything else as default giving access to that specific user, and we add it right in there. Now, because Plex is running on my NAS, I've actually now allowed access to my NAS as well, my NAS and my Plex, and I can control it all. And then the last thing that we'll add is a Windows server that I've got that is controlling my CCTV, my cameras around my house, so I know exactly what is going on. And when I'm away, I can log in, Make sure that there's no criminals breaking in. We're gonna call this CCTV. And I'm giving this one an IP address of 32. Done, done, done. Everything else will remain as is. But remember, you can get very specific around those ports if you need to. So our ESXi host running VMware, I only want it to be accessible via a web browser and perhaps over SSH. So I'm gonna go into here, I'm gonna go and edit it. And under my protocols, I'm gonna actually restrict it, and then I can actually allow specific ports and specific ports only. So I'm gonna say I'm gonna allow port 80, I'm gonna allow port 443, and I'm gonna allow port 22. So any other application on a different port is just not going to work. And now with it all ready to go, you grab your phone. You can open up your phone, install the TwinGate app. You take your laptop with you, wherever you go, you connect to a public Wi-Fi, search for an application, TwinGate. We're gonna go and grab that. There it is, continue. Now we throw in our URL. We already know that URL, we used it before. 
Now it does need to do some changes here to our VPN config. So we're gonna allow for that. And now we're gonna sign in. So now you can literally go into a web browser and it's almost like you're on a VPN, but it's not a VPN. Let's now throw an IP address in here. Look at that. Now I know that my Plex server is running on a different port, so I can just throw in that port at the end of this URL. There you have it. Now I am on the Wi-Fi, so why don't we actually go and turn that off? Now I'm on my 5G connection. Let's go and try to access my server. Why don't we try now to RDP? Let's RDP into our CCTV server. Of course, you can go and download the RDP app, the remote desktop application app from the App Store. Go create a new one. Let's save that. Let's try connect. There you have it. And then last one is our ESXi host. We wanna be able to access our VMware ESXi host. Now there is an easy way to do this as well. If I go into my twin gate area, there are the devices that I've got listed. There is my ESXi host. I can click on that and I can say copy original address. Let's go and open up our web browser and paste it in. And look at that straight away. Didn't even uh, take very long at all. Visit website. There you have it. So you gotta try TwinGate out. It is the greatest way to securely access your resources on your home network without opening up ports, without relying on a VPN gateway or exposing your network out to the internet. So remember to visit the link below in the video description to try out TwinGate for free. It is for free. And let me know your thoughts down below in the comments. And hey, we wanna hack that YouTube algorithm so you ensure that you are following along with all of the videos that we are releasing every single week. So click that button, subscribe, click on the bell so you don't miss out on anything. Stay tuned for the next video where we continue talking about all things tech and we'll see you next time.